Good morning or good afternoon, coaches, wherever you are across the country. Uh, this is Coach Anthony Williams, uh, founder and CEO of Connected Athletics. It's a startup company based here in Austin, Texas, where our focus is giving a platform for helping uh, student athletes connect with other athletes, uh, connect with college coaches as they're going through the recruiting process, and then start to develop their brand as they make a transition after college into either a career in their field of choice or in the NFL. Uh, we are excited today to have a, a up and coming prospect also from here in Austin, Texas. Today, I've got a class of 22 receiver by the name of Adrian Rodriguez who goes to James Williams High School. Adrian, how you doing this morning? I'm doing good, Coach, how are you? I'm good, hey, thanks for your time and coming on the, on the podcast. Uh, you are an up and coming guy that's getting ready for a breakout junior year. Uh, we obviously are in a very uh, interesting environment right now with COVID-19. Tell us what you're doing to stay safe and how you're still getting your workouts in. Um, so I have my weightlifting coach. Um, we try to keep it as little as possible. It's usually just me, my quarterback, and the coach. But he's helping us lift. And usually whenever I'm going out, you know, doing receiver work, it's like a one-on-one -on -one with my trainer, uh, Darius Lewis. And he's just helping me out, trying to get conditioned, stay in shape. So whenever the season comes by, I'm still in top shape. What are you doing to stay in contact with your coaches and your teammates? Are you guys having Zoom meetings or what are you doing there? Yeah, we've had Zoom meetings and uh, our coaches text us weekly workouts, you know, to do and uh, just how to stay in shape. Okay. Well, let's, uh, before we get into the interview, let's, let's watch for those that haven't seen your video. Let's bring up your video and just have you talk to some of the plays on there, and then, and then we'll jump right in, okay? Yeah. All right, let me share the screen here. All right, can you see that? It's loading. I got it. Okay, I'm going to hit play right now. Looks like you're on special teams, huh? Yes. So it was a turn right, and usually it's just to get behind a wall. We have a wall coming from the left side, going to the right, and it's usually just going down the sideline. So this is against Steel, good, okay. Good, tough, I like it, I like how you are. I like how you get north and south. A lot of guys have to run a lot of east and west, and that usually doesn't work out well on kickoff return. Adrian, are you more of an outside guy or an inside guy, or you can play both? Uh, usually my coaches use me as both. They like me inside because of my quickness, and they like me outside just because for the occasional jump ball or deep ball. Talk to us about your speed. What, what are you running right now in the 40 or the 100 before everything got shut down? 40, my fastest 40 is probably a 4.5, 4.6. Okay. Four four What is your mentality uh, as a receiver? Do you take as much pride in your blocking as you do uh, making plays after the catch, or what do you what do you what you're thinking? I try to. We run mostly screens, and so really in practice, we try to work on blocking as much as possible. And uh, I think of blocking like more as, as important as my route running. I feel like it's part of a receiver. It's like the other half. Okay. Talk to us about uh, what do you consider your strengths and weaknesses as a receiver? What do you what do you do really well, and what are you going to work on as you move into your junior year? I feel like my strengths is my strength is definitely like my speed, my route running, and how I'm committed to football and how hard working I am. And I feel like a weakness is probably just my size. If I'm just a little bigger, I can probably like break more tackles easily, something like that. Yeah, well, I mean, let's talk about that. I mean, you don't, you're not really small. I mean, 5'11", 150, and you're just going to junior year, you're going to grow some more. Tell me, what do you think you'll, your height and weight will be by the time you graduate in two years? By graduate, I definitely want to be probably around, like, 165, a little bit bigger. 
I would definitely be over six foot at least. Okay. Well, let's get into talk, talk to me about your academics. Uh, you, we had a little talk on, on online the other day. Uh, you're a three O student. Tell me about the importance of academics as a student athlete. Academics as a student is really important. It's not just your coaches getting on top of you. It's also your parents and really just like the importance of school for football is like really important because you can't even get on the field if you don't have the right grades. Is there a favorite teacher, counselor, someone at the school that has helped you put as much passion into your academics as football? Um, definitely one of my counselors. She's helped me with every single one of my class. She's made sure I've done this and that. She's made like checklists for me. It was just really helpful. Good. Uh, I probably haven't yet, but uh, when do you plan to take your first SAT or ACT? Uh, um, somewhere next year. I'm not sure yet, but okay. the only thing we've had so far is just pre-SAT. Okay. Tell me, there's a lot of good receivers in the class 22. Tell me what you bring. How do you, how do you uh, differentiate yourself from other receivers in your class? I feel like um, I'm trying to be like one of the top in my class. So I feel like I need to like work on my speed and route running. So I try to make that like perfect. I'm trying to work on my releases. I'm working on uh, making sure I get like the right steps on each route, every, the top of every route. And after catch, I just want to make sure I'm always going forward. Talk to me. I know you're working, you said you're working with Coach D. Lou, right? Your receivers right. guy? A lot of respect for him. Know him personally. We worked out together. I uh, brought him in to the National Combine. Tell me about what he's bringing to help take your game to the next level. He's helping me with my releases, my routes. He's also working on conditioning. He's uh, having us go up hills run down football fields, making sure that we're not tired, making sure that we're always on the top of our game and making sure we're not wasting any reps. Well, I know you're still very early in the recruiting process. Who are you hearing from and who do you want to hear from? Um, I haven't really been hearing a lot so far. It's just like a lot of coaches been like following, but not really reaching out yet because I'm a sophomore, so. Right. So, I mean, what, do you want to stay close to home? What are some schools, let's say this time next year, what are some schools that you want to start hearing from? Uh, definitely a school around Austin so I can stay home with my family, help them out still. I love to hear like an offer or something from somewhere around here, like UT. Um, it doesn't really matter as long as it's a good school that has good education, good football. Okay. Um, the relationship between a player and coach is important. As a former player and a college coach, I know I used to always have to have a really good relationship with my coaches and with my players. Tell me about your relationship with your receivers coach, your offense coordinator, and your head coach over at Bowie. Me and my receivers coach, we've known each other since Little League. He's seen me grow up, so we've always been really chill and, like, we get along very well. Uh, our head coach, Coach Abels, me and him always joke around. We're really close. He texts me from time to time, calls me, making sure my grades are good. Uh, my offense and coordinator is always checking in with me, making sure I'm not taking any days off, making sure I stay on top of my grades and everything. Okay. What are some of the things you're looking forward to as you transition to college in a couple years? Um, I'm hopefully trying to – get way better at football, trying to take education way more seriously, trying to get a degree, get as much as I can done in college. Okay. Uh, who's going to help you, let's say it's this time next year or the year after that, who's going to be the people who are going to help you make the decision on where you're going to commit to school? Um, it, my parents are going to be with me 100%. Um, it's mostly on me whenever, wherever I want to go, but – my parents will probably help me decide, and I think they'll make, like, the most sense to me because okay. they know me the best. Okay. Um, let's switch up gears here a little bit. Um, what do you like to do when you're not working out with Coach D. Lou or, or getting ready for football? What are some of your interests? Are you a hunter? Are you a fisherman? What do you like to do in your spare time? Um, sometimes it's like 
I'll go and hang out with friends. I'll play with them online. I'll always be um, with my friends or something. Okay. Uh, you know, we're obviously in this COVID nineteen environment. You guys are staying home and being safe. Uh, what what kind of what video games do you like to play? What do you what do you what are you good at? Um, mostly a Madden and a two K kind of guy. I love sports games. Okay. And then what apps are you rocking uh, with, that you use on your phone? Are you a Twitter guy, Instagram, TikTok? What are you doing on your phone? I'm um, always looking at Twitter, uh, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. Okay. And then you know, obviously we've been inside a lot. You haven't got a chance to get out very much. But when you do finally get past this COVID-19 environment, you get out with your friends, your girlfriend or whatever, uh, what kind, what's your shoe game looking like? What, what, what are you rocking on your feet right now? Right now, I have some Air Maxes on. I'm in love with Air Maxes. Yeah, okay. I'll occasionally wear Ultra Boost or some Vans. Okay. Uh, tell me about your music interest. Uh, before, when you get ready for a workout or you in pregame, what artists do you listen to to get hyped before a game? Oh, uh, it has to be like a rapper. I'll listen to any rap music. As long as like the like, tempo is okay, like, Football's like about going like hard and fast, and if the beats like the same, it can kind of like get me into it, I guess, get me a little hype. Okay. Start working. Let, let's say somebody's going to see you play for the first time this season, uh, coming up in the fall, and they're going to say, "Man, that receiver reminds me of somebody." Who do you pattern your game off of, either at the college or the uh, pro player? Uh, I probably pattern my game off of someone like Marquise Goodwin. I've always watched him growing up, and I've always looked up to his speed and always wanted to be as fast as him. That's interesting you say that because he's actually my nephew, and he played with my son at Texas. Uh, you know, he's going to be playing yeah. in Philadelphia this year, so I appreciate you saying that. Marquise is, uh, you know, he's he's not a big guy, but he makes it for it in, in yeah. heart and speed, and so uh, and I see a lot of that in your game, so that's actually a pretty good role model to have. Um, do you have an idea what you're going to major in when you get to college? Um... I haven't really thought about it. I've always wanted to do business or do something with kids, you know. So after college, I have something to do, like start working with kids, training or even coaching, something like that. Okay. You know, you've been playing this game for a while. Uh, you know that football is all about overcoming adversity. Give us an example of either a time in your life personally or involving football where you had to overcome adversity. So growing up, like playing little league, middle school, I've always been like the star player. I've always been starting, but this year being a sophomore in varsity hasn't really got me that playing time. So I've really been doubting like, should I switch schools or should I keep doing this? But it's really just, you have to keep on going hard and then your coaches will notice. And it's just been a hard time because I see myself not starting. I'm like, Am I going to start? And it's just like, I know I'll start. So I have to keep on working. Is that something that motivates you? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, we're not always going to star and be the starter. I mean, is that something that motivates you? Or what does that do for you as you as you prepare for the game? Yeah, I feel like being the star player is something that motivates me. I want to be a leader. I'm going to be a person that always uh, is, like, there for my team, like, if they're counting on somebody, I want to be that person, someone like that. Okay. Um, simple question, but most coaches will ask this when you go on visits. Why do you love football? I love football because it's something I've always been growing up to do. Uh, instead of, like, I guess doing my homework or anything when I was younger, I guess I was always doing the football. It was it was just there. It came to me. I've been loving it ever since because I feel like it'll give me a future. It'll give me something I can do to help my family. What are some of the things you're learning from football that you're applying to your own your own personal life? Teamwork, work ethic, what? Uh, definitely teamwork and caring about other people and helping out. Um, like our head coach, Coach Abels, he says like it teaches us to be. He wants us to be better fathers, and he thinks that football teaches life lessons and it's something that you can put into real life. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Coach Abel's. I've known and talked to him for many years, and that is exactly he and I are on the same page. In that, if football is not making you a better person, 
which makes you a better young man down the road, become a better, you know, husband and father one day, then we're all not doing it right. So I love hearing you say uh, that. Talk to me about leadership. I know you're just going on to your, ju to your junior year, but uh, talk to me on what, how you define leadership and how you lead at, in the Bowie football program. I feel like uh, the leadership is always the person that's, you know, taking charge. He's always telling people what to do. He's correcting people. He's telling people what they need to be doing, what to work on. He's always the first one to do it, a lot of things and take responsibility. Okay. What would you tell now that you're a junior and you probably got some freshmen and sophomore who want to be like you, I want to play varsity sophomore, based on your story, what would you tell to help those underclassmen? Like, hey, you got to be patient, keep working, and uh, you go from there. What, what, how do you handle that? i say that it takes time. You, uh, you might be a sophomore on varsity, but it takes time to, like, start. And uh, I feel like I just would need to tell them to keep on working, keep on doing what you're doing and the time will come and then when it does come you just got to show off well you're obviously playing with a lot of great players at, at Bowie and you've played against some here's a time to shout out some other guys you feel are being uh slept on or maybe not being recruited who are some of the other players in your class or your teammates that you'd like to shout out right now uh definitely Jason Gaines he was all team district offense and defense uh Diego Tello he's a great quarterback he's a sophomore and he was starting last year. And uh, someone like one of our other DBs, Danny O'Bright, he's a real good dude. He can stay with any receiver. And uh, our linebacker, uh, Jackson Howard, he's a sophomore too. He's real big. And yeah. So you guys are in a very tough district, obviously, with, with Westlake and Lake Travis and even Del Valley now starting to come up. Talk to me about how that competition is making you better as a player? Um, Westlake and Lake Travis are really good schools. So it's like every single time you play them, they're at another level. And I feel like if you compete at them, uh, if you compete with them, then you can try to like get to the level more. Like the more you play them, you can get more experience because there's like way better kids going there and you get to play against them. And I feel like you get, like, you know, just used to that skill level. So, the, you know, playing against the, those kind of schools and that kind of competition, does it inspire and motivate you that if I can do well against these guys, it will help me in my recruiting? Is that your mindset? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Um, talk to me about um, people in your life who are influential. Obviously, maybe your parents or some siblings or coaches or teachers. Who are the, some of the most influential people in your life right now? Definitely my parents. They've always helped me through everything I've been through. Um, a trainer, uh, Jackson Shipley, he's been there helping me a lot. He's always uh, making sure that he's texting me and wondering how I'm doing. Definitely some coaches, too. They've helped me growing up, texting me, you know, and checking on me. Okay. What are the sports? You're obviously a very talented athlete. Um, what other sports have you played uh, at Bowie or otherwise? Basketball, baseball, track. What do you do besides football? Uh, besides football, it's really just track. What events were you running in track before it got shut down? Um, I was running the 100, 200, and 400. But the 100, 200 were both relays. Okay. Do you like track? Do you like working out? I know track is a tough sport because you're always running, but uh, tell me about how you enjoyed uh, track and field because I know it helps you get faster. Yeah, I love track and field because it helps me get ready for football. I do it for the conditioning. I do it for the better speed, and so I can put it to football. Okay. One of the things coaches always want to ask players is, uh, you know, uh, are you a competitor? Now, a lot of kids say they are, but talk to us about – uh, how you would define you as a competitor? Um, I guess just competing with another level, being on varsity as, like, a young kid. You see, like, better kids throughout, like, every track meet. So you want to keep on doing, like, you want to keep on winning. So you have to be competing against people like them. So you have to work harder and harder. 
and so you can compete with them. Okay. Uh, as a coach, you know, knowing how my players learn is very important. I'm sure a lot of college coaches, that same thing. As you know, there are different types of learning styles. There's verbal, there's visual, and then there's physical. Tell, uh, tell these coaches, how do you best learn as a student and as a football player? I think I best learn by in the classroom and on the football field by visual. It's like you can see what they're doing and then you can just follow it. Okay. Um, another simple question that coach is going to ask you is why do you think your game is going to translate to the college level? I think my game will translate to the college level because I've had trainers, I've had coaches told me that I compete in the next level and then makes me feel more confident. I feel like my speed, my route running is good enough to be in the college level and also my competitiveness. Okay. Let's fast forward, say, five or six years. You're at the end of your college career, and you've been blessed to be uh, called to the NFL draft. Who's sitting at your table waiting for your name to be called on the first day of the draft? Uh, definitely one of my parents. You know, they've always helped me. Like, it's, it's crazy how much they've helped me. They've been there since I was little. They've helped me with every single thing I needed help with. Ever since I got hurt, they were there. Ever since I needed help with homework, they were there. I needed some food, water. They were always there helping me. Mm -hmm. Who else is going to be on the table sitting with you? Um, definitely um, a good friend of mine. It would probably be a quarterback, you know, throwing deep to me all the time or always scoring with me. Okay. Let's talk about what you do in the community. What are you doing to give back? Are you active in your church? Are you active in other community groups with your family? What do you do in your spare time to kind of give back to the community? Yeah, sometimes I go to my church. It's called Shoreline. We'll go over there. We'll um, pray with people. We can give back to other, uh, like, little shelters, and we just help out a lot. Okay. Well, in these last 30 seconds, uh, Adrian, tell these coaches – why they should recruit you. Tell them about, give them your elevator pitch on who Adrian Rodriguez is. Well, they should uh, recruit me because my speed, my agility, my uh, route running, the way I can, the way I never give up, the way I'm always uh, taking my time if I need to. Um, I'm hardworking, never giving up on reps, and I'm always there if they need me. Okay. Well, great. Well, Adrian, I'm looking forward to seeing you in the season uh, this fall coming up. I'm looking forward to seeing how you take a game and have a breakout in the year as a junior. If you ever need anything, please let me know, and, and we'll be back in contact with you soon. Yeah, sure. Thank All you. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Have a great day. You too.